on that. Meantime, listen up. Invisible ink, coded messages, swapping identical briefcases in foggy train stations. It's also 20 years ago, and it reads like a Robert Ludlum novel. But it's real. 11 people arrested from Boston to New York to Cyprus. And they're suspected of spying for Russia in an effort to learn more about U.S. weapons and diplomatic policy, although it's unclear if they were actually able to collect actionable intelligence despite years undercover. Brad Thor has served as a member of the Department of Homeland Security's Analytic Red Cell program and has used that experience to write spy novels, most recently foreign influence. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Chris. Uh, this does sound sort of James Bondian and their married couples with children. Are you surprised? You know what? I'm not surprised. This is classic tradecraft. It has worked for generations and it will work for generations to come. These kind of brush bypasses to deliver information, the I'm going to hold the magazine in my left hand if our meeting is in danger and we should wave off the meeting. Come it's on, all that, really happen? that stuff really ha it happens because it works, but also it's something that once we're on to people, we know to look for these things. And I think that the FBI really deserves a big hand for busting this plot. Yeah, one of the things that they said is that uh, these folks were trying to infiltrate U.S. policy circles. What does that mean? Well, they're trying to get close to decision makers. There were people they were working on in New York City who were big campaign donors who had access to political figures, and they were hoping to get introductions or to exert influence if they could through those campaign donors. This is traditional espionage. The, the reset button that we thought we hit, our hamburger summit that we thought we had with the Russians. They, the Russians and the Chinese are some of the biggest threats that we have when it comes to espionage. And as much as we'd like to work with them and, and lower our nuclear stockpiles and things like that, we have to remember that Russia still poses a strategic threat to the United so who States. who are these people? What's their background? Well, it's interesting. Uh, what's starting to come out now is one of them seems to have done several, uh, one of the ladies in the plot seems to have done several op-ed pieces, or at least one op-ed piece. We're hearing about more where she railed against America. Uh, often disgruntled people with an axe to grind against their own government are very easy uh, to turn for a foreign espionage service to, to grab those people and use them. Although it sounds like some of these people have been purposely sent from Russia and provided with a lot of money. The, the, I've seen some of the figures for the, the expenses in Boston and so on and so forth, the rent and the going out to dinner and the things like that. So it sounds like it might be a combination of Russians that were moved here and then disgruntled Americans that were turned to become operatives. And who's running this operation? Most likely the Russian external intelligence agency, the SVR, kind of the, you know, the FSB, the former KGB, they handle the interior stuff. So this is probably their external group. This is a big embarrassment uh, for, for our country. This comes right on the heels of a uh, very high level meeting, obviously, between Medvedev and, and President Obama. This is a big slap in the face for us. And I hope that, the, that our national security structure is going to get behind the president and is going to forcefully address this. Because when it comes to our national security, it's not a partisan issue. It's an American issue. And this hurts all Americans. And we just got this information. I don't even know if you've heard it yet, but the just, uh, spokesman for the Justice Department says that the reason that they arrested these FBI, uh, the FBI arrested them on uh, Sunday, is partly because one of the suspects was scheduled to leave the country. Does that say to you he may have had some actionable intelligence? Does it say to you that maybe they were onto the fact that we were onto them? I think it, I think if the FBI pulled the trigger, it meant that they had no other choice. If this person got out of the country and was able to pass off certain information. Uh, uh, we had two choices, grab that person on the plane, but if we do that and they don't show up on the other side, it will say that the network here has been compromised and it would have been shut down. So I trust the FBI. They have a lot of experience in, in busting these kind of plots. And if they needed to pull the trigger, then that was the right thing to do. I'm confident of that. All right, Brad Thor, real life experience. And the new book is uh, Foreign Influence. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Chris. A teen sailor who was stranded in the middle of the Indian Ocean finally made it back around the world, but not exactly the way she planned. Plus, hunting bin Laden, the man detained on his mission to capture the world's most wanted man, says he's ready to give it another shot. Time for the Your Business Entrepreneur of the Week. Former artificial flower salesman Matt Momin was on a plane drinking a beer when he had a brainstorm, a lime-shaped bottle opener. He created a prototype and approached Corona. The sales pitch worked. The brewer loved the idea. They sold 5,000 units and expect to sell another 100,000 this summer. For more, watch Your Business Sunday mornings at 7.30 on MSNBC. American Express Open is helping owners get paid faster with Accept Pay. 
Well, my cut's still there. Mine too. My cut's all better. Because Sarah's mom discovered Neosporin with patented technology that heals cuts two days faster than store brands. Neosporin heals faster than store brands.